Hey you, you've been recording at home, writing music at your desktop, you got the guitar thing figured out, and you're getting some pretty damn fine results. However, your drums sound like R2-D2's been humping a toaster. What the hell went wrong? When it comes to programmed drums, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with them, and over the last 10 years or so, it's been mostly hate. Because for me, programming drums started out way back in the mid-80s, somewhere around 85 or 86, with my Commodore 64 and a program called Funky Drum. It was rudimentary at best, and it didn't even have any cymbal sounds but it was new tech and it was fun to work with. Now, eventually I moved on to a program called Micro Rhythm. It was a bit more advanced than Funky Drummer and most importantly, it was something I could use as an arrangement tool to write songs with. Now, of course, my bandmates at the time thought this was hilarious. I'd make demo tapes with them and hand them out to the band and they'd all be like, hey, you got Pac-Man playing drums. <laughs> Once again, it wasn't exactly the most realistic drum sound on earth, but it was invaluable as a writing tool. Despite today's technology being light years ahead of those rudimentary programs, a lot of modern metal's drumming really doesn't seem to have evolved that much. It's still very much Pac-Man <laughs> drums in so many ways. And that's not the technology's fault. It's mainly because musicians are the laziest bastards on earth. Now, the biggest problem I'm hearing in a lot of your mixes is something called the 127 effect. And that's where MIDI notes have a velocity range, meaning how hard the instrument is hit. And the values go from zero to 127. And most of you guys programming your drums at home, you put everything at 127 because that sounds the best except when you try to play it in context of a mix. Here's the thing, drummers don't hit the hardest they can every single time. They've got strength reserves. It's like cranking your amp up to 11. Yeah, it's great, but you don't want to do that all the time unless you're a complete moron. Same thing with drummers. Yes, they're complete morons, but more on that, pun intended, is you want to program the velocities so they're at a more comfortable hit strength, not their absolute strongest hit all the time because it just sounds dumb. Let me show you what I mean. Here's something where all the velocities Velocities. This is the Reaper piano roll here. You can see all the program drums and you can see all the velocities had just been cranked up to a million here. Like, hear that double kick? There's like no variation in that. It's just all heavy hits all the time. And drummers just don't play like that. I mean, if we start playing around the velocities a little bit. But even that, you know, everything's just been completely pancaked here. Now, here's something programmed by a drummer who actually might have a clue as to what the fuck is going on when a drummer plays. Look at this. There's a variety in the hit strikes. Like when we do that snare roll there, he backs off on the velocity. Sounds much more real. That's definitely along the lines of what a drummer might actually play. Now, if we take a look at how this is programmed here, here's one of the kick hits. That's nowhere near that. That's like 79, 80. See the variety there? 81, 94, 81. Nowhere near 127. That's because usually drummers have different leg strikes. Maybe one foot favors the other. Usually it's the right foot, but that sounds real. See, that sounds pleasant. That doesn't want to make me reach for the stop button, which so many of you guys make me want to do when you force me to listen to your mixes. Now, the other thing I see a lot of you guys overdoing is compression, especially when it comes to programmed drums. I mean, like we're using extinction level event here and it's actually designed to sound good right out of the box. If I pull up the snare here, what's going on? I do got a slight bit of compression going on already. And I mean, not a lot either. It's a sample. We've already programmed it. Believe me, it sounds good just the way it is. But I see so many of you guys dropping on all this extra compression that we really don't need. One thing I hear, and this is typical in a lot of digital recordings, especially modern metal recordings these days, is something I call the brick snare. I've been hearing it all over the place, mainly because I've been so guilty of doing it myself. And that's where we just smack the ever living shit out of the snare in some sad attempt to make it sound better when really we're just making it sound worse. Yeah, that's so metal, dude! If you're using program drums, don't compress the snare. And if you absolutely have to, use it in a very, very sparing manner. Maybe just to add a little bit more attack, but don't spank the living piss out of it. Once again, the drums are designed to sound good right out of the box, so you don't have to fuck with them. And that's the big thing, you know? I remember back in the early days when we were mixing, you know, we'd have maybe one or two compressors in the whole fucking studio. So we had to work within those limitations, and we made great sounding records back then. And then, you know, when the technology came along, I said, oh, this is going to be great. I'll be able to compress every single channel I want. The only problem is because we can do it, now we've 
feel like we have to. And it's not really having a beneficial effect to the music. So here's what I would suggest. Instead of compressing the living shit out of each individual drum, do what Andy Wallace does and just set up a global compressor on the mix. I've got one over here that I've been using. I'm going to kick this off and I'm just going to do it in software here. And I've got an SSL bus compressor going across the mix. Here's the key to the castle, kids. What we want to do is we want to go very fast attack, 0.1 milliseconds, auto release, four to one ratio. We're aiming for about 4 dBs of gain reduction on the mix as a whole. And that's all the compression I'm adding on. That way the mix will gel without spanking the living piss out of the individual drums, which is exactly what we want. But everything's sitting right where it needs to be. And that's it. That's all there is to it. In case you're wondering why I've got this track called Snare Double, I've actually got a send going over to another track. And that's going out to a hardware reverb. I've got a full video breakdown on this. It's called Why Your Snare Sounds Like Shit in a Mix. And you should check it out because I, I show you guys how to use this technique and it, and it works out pretty damn well. But basically it gives me... Sounds a little weird on its own. Sits right in the mix though. And that's the trick, guys. Got to remember, just because it sounds weird on its own doesn't mean it's going to sound bad in the mix. And that's what we're going for. Now, the other thing I see you clever little drum programmers out there doing all the time is EQing the living shit out of the drums. You don't need to do that, especially when it comes to program drums. Once again, and this is the thing, a lot of program drums are already, quote unquote, pre-EQ'd to be mix ready. Of course, on ELE, you can turn all that stuff off if you know what you're doing. But if you're just beginning, I'd say go with what's there and learn what works. See, what, what you guys love to do, though, is you love to put on EQs on everything that doesn't need to be here. Now I'm using the Neve Genesis EQs. These are digitally controlled analog EQs. They're freaking amazing, but I've got them engaged and listen to just how, oh, how brittle the fucking kick and snare sound because we're adding so much top end. Seriously, we don't need all that EQ. We can just turn that off. That's the kick. Here's the snare. Now it just sits a whole lot better. Again, it sounds good from the ground up. We don't have to crank the living shit out of the top end on the on the EQs. And that's what I hear time and time and time again in so many of your mixes, is your guys are adding all this trouble boosting EQ when it doesn't need to be there. Just use your fader. Start with that first, get a good level. Maybe add a little bit of top end if you think you absolutely need it. Now, the other thing is here, if, if you notice, like everything is just dead nuts on beat. And unfortunately, a lot of engineers have deluded themselves into thinking, and musicians too, is that you know, when everything's right on beat, that that's a good thing. And that's just not how rock and roll works. Humans don't play music like that. I mean, like, sure, if you're playing disco or dance music or something like that, that would make sense, but we don't need everything to be 100% on beat. So what we can do here is actually in Reaper, there's a neat function here. We go into piano roll. All you gotta do is double click your MIDI file there, and we hit the H button and that's humanize. I'm not gonna play with the velocity, but I'm going to play with the timing ever so slightly. See what we get if we just change that up slightly. So we've just made a slight change, not a lot. Everything's still fairly on beat, but this should be uh, even that much more human. Because I don't know if you've ever played with a real drummer, but real drummers just don't play perfect. This has got a much more realistic vibe to it. Oh yeah, and if you're digging the bass guitar, that's actually a one-two combo from Spectre Digital right now. That's our Singularity Virtual Bassist, and that's uh, Element Bass right after it. And uh, wow, do these two ever play nice together? We've got both those available right now, in addition to Extinction Level Event 2.0, as part of Spectre Digital's Spring Thing. Run for your lives, it's the Spectre Digital Spring Thing! From the frozen north, the thing emerges to wreak havoc throughout the world of pro audio plugins. It only comes once a year to give you the ultimate virtual rhythm section, element bass amp, singularity virtual bass, and extinction level event 2.0 drums. A package so heavy, so lethal, it can't be contained. What's more, the thing includes Metal Essentials Volume 1 and Volume 2, custom MIDI groove packs for Extinction Level Event. But the horror continues! You also get Alex Nasla's mixing and mastering a full metal album, and plus all of my courses too. Total Heavy Guitar, Producing Prog Metal, Mixing Symphonic Folk Metal, and Mixing Metal and Reaper with free plugins for all of you guys out there looking for the best deal possible. The spring thing has come, but it will only be around till Sunday night, and then it's moving on to terrorize another dimension. Get it now for only 180 bucks or four payments for only 45 bucks because no one escapes the Spectre Digital Spring thing.
Now, one point I forgot to mention here, and this is so critical to getting your drums to sound realistic, and that is one simple word, bleed. When you mic up a drum set, your mics just don't pick up what it's aimed at. It picks up all the stuff around it as well. And it rejects it to varying degrees. That's why they're directional, but they're not perfect. Making that bleed work in the context of all the other drums, that's one other element that you can use to make your drums sound that much more realistic. Because if we turn off all that bleed, we're missing what makes the drums sound real because that's what we hear on real drums is bleed. Let me show you guys what I mean. So if I listen to the snare track here, you can hear a bit of the kick there. Now, if we listen to the kick drum, we should hear a little bit of bleed as well. Can hear a bit of the rooms, can hear a bit of that snare. Now, the great thing is here on ELE, we've got a bleed control. Basically, we can pick whatever we want in case our snare top, and uh, we can just dial in a global command for how much bleed we want in the other mic. So if I say have my toms cranked up here, just sold up, I'm going to turn up the bleed on the snare as well. Let's hear what we get. Obviously, we don't want that but just a little goes a very long way. That's how real drums work, and that's what we're after. Even though we don't want it, we do want it, just sparingly. That's the trick, is to use just enough to make it convincing without it being overbearing, or not taking it all away, because that doesn't happen in real life. So what that shows is yes, you can get your program drums to sound pretty great in a mix, as long as you're willing to work with what you have and work within the limitations of what you have. And remember, you're trying to get them to sound realistic. And that means using features like the bleed knob on extinction level event, because real drums, the mics all bleed into each other. So you won't be just getting a straight snare drum. You want a bit of that kick bleeding in there. You want a bit of that hi-hat bleeding in. You want some of those cymbals bleeding into that mic. Same thing with your tom mic, same thing with your kick mic. Everything's gotta kinda gel together. Together. Fortunately, ELE allows you to do all that, and then you can do advanced things like pick out different kinds of toms, what kind of mics are on those toms, what kind of skins are on those toms. That is some super cool functionality and definitely opens up a whole world of different sounds. Just remember to not 127 or compress or EQ the living shit out of everything. Remember guys, it does sound good out of the box as I just showed you. Now you guys saw me working on the console and I had all the tracks routed out to go through the individual faders here, and that's a fantastic way to work. Honestly, for a couple minutes there, I forgot I was working with a fake drummer. It just felt like the real thing. Very cool indeed. But here's what's cool. I'm going to give you guys a free download in the description below if you want to check out my multi-track output for Reaper. I've set it up as a template, so all you got to do is load up the whole project file, and ELE will go to its own individual tracks, and you can mix that way on your own. Just remember, don't add a compressor unless you're putting a mix bus compressor on there, like, say, the SSL, as I showed you earlier. And also, don't forget about Spectre Digital's Spring thing only gonna be happening until the end of day Sunday once again that's got extinction level event element base singularity base virtual instrument plus my courses Alex's courses and a couple of MIDI drum groove libraries as well metal essentials volume one and two that's all going for only 180 bucks or you can part it out into equal payments of 45 bucks over the next few months if that'll be a little bit easier for you we're willing to work with you anyway once again that sale is ending Sunday night, so grab it while you can. Links for everything are in the description below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And until then, stay punchy yet warm, my friends. What the fuck happened there? This part. Fuck! All right. Yeah, I'll do that one more time. What the hell went wrong?